John Davison Rockefeller Sr. was born in July 8, 1839, was an American business magnate and philanthropist. He has been widely considered the wealthiest American of all time and the richest person in modern history. Rockefeller was born into a large family in upstate New York that moved several times before eventually settling in Cleveland. He became an assistant bookkeeper at age 16 and went into several business partnerships beginning at age 20, concentrating his business on oil refining. Rockefeller founded the Standard Oil Company in 1870. He ran it until 1897 and remained its largest shareholder. Rockefeller was the second child born in Richford, New York, to con artist William A. Rockefeller Sr. and Eliza Davison. He had an elder sister named Lucy and for younger siblings. His father was of English and German descent, while his mother was of Ulster Scott descent. William Sr. was first a lumberman and then a traveling salesman who identified himself as a botanic physician who sold elixirs, described by locals as Big Bill and Devil Bill. In September 1855, when Rockefeller was 16, he got his first job as an assistant bookkeeper working for a small produce commission firm in Cleveland called Hewitt and Tuttle. As a youth, Rockefeller reportedly said that his two great ambitions were to make $100,000, equivalent to $2.9 million, and to live 100 years. Rockefeller's wealth soared as kerosene and gasoline grew in importance, and he became the richest person in the country, controlling 90% of all oil in the United States at his peak. Oil was used throughout the country as a light source until the introduction of electricity and as a fuel after the invention of the automobile. Furthermore, Rockefeller gained enormous influence over the railroad industry which transported his oil around the country. Standard Oil was the first great business trust in the United States. Rockefeller revolutionized the petroleum industry and, through corporate and technological innovations, was instrumental in both widely disseminating and drastically reducing the production cost of oil. His company and business practices came under criticism, particularly in the writings of author Ida Tarbell. The Supreme Court ruled in 1911 that Standard Oil must be dismantled for violation of federal antitrust laws. It was broken up into 30 for separate entities, which included companies that became ExxonMobil, Chevron Corporation, and others, some of which still have the highest level of revenue in the world. In the end, it turned out that the individual segments of the company were worth more than the entire company was when it was one entity, the sum of the parts were worth more than the whole, as shares of these doubled and tripled in value in their early years. Consequently, Rockefeller became the country's first billionaire, with a fortune worth nearly 2% of the national economy. His personal wealth was estimated in 1913 at $900 million, which was almost 3% of the US GDP of $39.1 billion that year. That was his peak net worth, and amounts to $24.7 billion. Rockefeller spent much of the last 40 years of his life in retirement at Kaikut, his estate in Westchester County, New York, defining the structure of modern philanthropy, along with other key industrialists, such as steel magnate Andrew Carnegie. His fortune was mainly used to create the modern systematic approach of targeted philanthropy through the creation of foundations that had a major effect on medicine, education, and scientific research. His foundations pioneered developments in medical research and were instrumental in the near eradication of hookworm and yellow fever in the United States. He and Carnegie gave form and impetus through their charities to the work of Abraham Flexner, who in his essay Medical Education in America emphatically endowed empiricism as the basis for the U.S. medical system of the 20th century. Rockefeller was also the founder of the University of Chicago and Rockefeller University and funded the establishment of Central Philippine University in the Philippines. He was a devout Northern Baptist and supported many church-based institutions. He adhered to total abstinence from alcohol and tobacco throughout his life. For advice, he relied closely on his wife Laura Spellman Rockefeller with whom he had five children. He was a faithful congregant of the Erie Street Baptist Mission Church, taught Sunday school, and served as a trustee, clerk, and occasional janitor. Religion was a guiding force throughout his life and he believed it to be the source of his success. Pratt and Rogers became Rockefeller's partners. Rogers, in particular, became one of Rockefeller's key men in the formation of the Standard Oil Trust. Pratt's son, Charles Millard Pratt, became Secretary of Standard Oil, 
1864, Rockefeller married Laura Celestia Setti Spellman 1839-1915, daughter of Harvey Buell Spellman and Lucy Henry. They had four daughters and one son together. He said later, her judgment was always better than mine. Without her keen advice, I would be a poor man. The Rockefeller wealth, distributed as it was through a system of foundations and trusts, continued to fund family philanthropic, commercial, and eventually, political aspirations throughout the 20th century. In his 50s, Rockefeller suffered from moderate depression and digestive troubles. During a stressful period in the 1890s, he developed alopecia, the loss of some or all body hair. By 1901, he began wearing tupas, and by 1902, his mustache disappeared. His hair never grew back, but other health complaints subsided as he lightened his workload. Rockefeller died of arteriosclerosis on May 23, 1937, less than two months shy of his 98th birthday, at the Casements, his home in Ormond Beach, Florida. He was buried in Lakeview Cemetery in Cleveland. Rockefeller, aged 86, wrote the following words to sum up his life. I was early taught to work as well as play. My life has been one long, happy holiday, full of work and full of play. I dropped the worry on the way. And God was good to me every day. Thanks for watching and don't forget to subscribe the channel.